We begin a group of labs on Psalm 1. Today we'll be focusing simply on verse 1. But we probably should read the whole psalm, just these six verses, because otherwise we might treat this verse in a dangling kind of way that would be misleading. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Father, as we focus now on Psalm 1, this great introductory psalm to the whole 150 psalm psalter, Show us what it is to be blessed, what it is to avoid this kind of walking here and this kind of standing and this kind of sitting. And, oh, God, open us to this delight in your law. Do Psalm 1 in our hearts as we study it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's just read verses 1 and 2 again. And I'll show you why I'm bringing in verse 2 before we focus entirely on verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but instead of this walking and standing and sitting in scoffing and sinning and wickedness, instead of that, his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So let's begin by asking, what does this word mean? How would you go about answering that question, blessed? And of course, you could look it up in a dictionary, but always better than a dictionary is usage. And this word is used 26 times in the Psalms. And if you just do a quick survey of those uses, You'll know what it means. Let's do that. Just a few, just a few of them. Psalm 32. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven. So blessedness is the, is the state of heart you feel you have when your, when your transgressions are forgiven, your sins are covered. Blessed is the one against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. I mean, this, is, this makes you do backflips and stand on your head for joy, Martin Luther said, if you could believe that all your sins would be forgiven. And that's, that's the kind of blessedness we're talking about. Or Psalm 34, 8, Oh, taste, taste, and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in this, this tasty, beautiful Lord Jesus. So we've got refuge and safety, and in that refuge and safety, a good taste and a good sight. Or Psalm uh, 40, uh, 65, 4, blessed is the one you choose to bring near, dwell in your court. So this blessedness is what we have when we're dwelling with God in his courts. We shall be satisfied. <laughs> oh, yes. Satisfied with the goodness of your house. So this is a, a wonderful satisfaction in the presence of God. Or 8915, blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face. That's, that's the opposite of frowning and disapproval and anger. This is the bright smile of God, which is what we feel when we're in that kind of light. So that's a taste of what blessedness here means. And the reason I included verse 2 here is because right in the immediate context, you have this word. So read it. Blessed is the man who doesn't do this because as a blessed man, he's doing this. 
which would say strongly we're on the right track in all those usages because the blessed man is the delighting man. He's delighting in the law of the Lord. He's not just doing right things. He's enjoying meditating on God and doing right things. So that's my answer to the question, what does blessed mean? It means happy, deeply content in God, enjoying God's favor to the full forever. Blessed is the man who, and now notice, three groups of three, right? Walks, stands, sits. That's one group of three. Walks not in the council, stands not in the way, sits not in the seat. That's the second group of three. And then thirdly, walks not in the counsel of the wicked, stands not in the way of sinners, sits not in the seat of scoffers. So you've got that group of three, and you've got this group of three, and you've got this group of three, right? And when you see that, you say, okay, what I need to do to understand what's going on here is figure out how these relate to each other. How does walking and standing and sitting relate? What kind of a movement? Same. This is counsel. This is way. This is seat. What am I to understand about why he's moving from counsel to way to seat? This is wicked sinner and scoffer. What am I to understand about why he's moving from wicked to sinner to, to scoffer here? So let's take them one at a time and see if we can think this through, because that's what (laughs) meditation is. And verse 2 says, his delight is on the law of the Lord, and he meditates, which is what we're doing now. That's what we're doing. What about walking, standing, and sitting? Is it uh, a movement from fully engaged and and fully uh, participating in, and here just barely considering, uh, standing around wondering if he should do this kind of walking in uh, evil, and here just beginning. Or is it almost the opposite, namely that you were walking in the way and then you paused and considered and thought, yeah, this is a pretty good way. And then you just sat right down and joined fully in the scoffing. Which which of those would it be? Well, let's just leave it at that for the moment and see whether this sheds light on this. Here you got counsel, right? That means advice. These are words. The wicked have said something. They've counseled something. It's bad advice, but it's only words. Now, here you've got a way. That's more than advice. That's actually um, a path. You're, you're walking in it. Here, here you're, you're hearing counsel, and here you're seeing a way, and here's a seat at the table of those who are plotting with their counsel and commending their way. And so it seems to me this is, this is pretty clear, a movement from um, considering to participation, to full bore, I'm part of you. I've got a seat at the table of evil. This this trilogy here, I'm not sure. Wicked is the generic word for um, evil. Sinners would probably be the kind of evil that specifically is breaking um, a, a law of God, God is in the picture. This is generic evil. This is, this is evil considered in, in breaking specific commandments, perhaps. And then scoffing is bragging about that. And so I think, again, we've got a, a movement towards deeper, stronger, more settled evil. So that's the way I'm going to go back and see this. So let me, let me see if I can sum up what I'm seeing here and, and you test to see if you agree with this. This walking in the counsel of the wicked, I would say, would be falling in, falling in with the advice of the wicked being commended to you. 
standing in the way of sinners would mean you've stopped, you've moved into a way that's being counseled for you, and here you have finally decided, I'm going to sit down at the very table and seat of those who are most bragging about their sin and their wickedness. So it seems to me there's a, there is a movement here from the lesser engagement to the fuller, more fixed and settled intransigent agreement. And what's being said here is, oh, how happy is the man who doesn't get trapped at the beginning, gets sucked in deeper, and goes all the way in. So this is a warning. The loss of blessedness, the loss of happiness, begins with listening to this counsel, walking with these wicked and considering what they're suggesting, and then standing around in the way, and then sitting deeply with them at their table as they plot their scoffing, and you're joining them in it now you're no longer just influence you're part of the influencers and how how happy is the man to whom that doesn't happen now let me ponder this with you for just a moment this is saying that it is a happy state not to get sucked into sin now i know that it is also back here in 32 1 and 2 a happy state to have your sins forgiven Blessed is the one who once upon a time walked in the council and stood in the way and sat and God rescued him and he he forgave him for all those sins. He covered them. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord doesn't count all that iniquity where he totally, totally failed back here. He was walking. He was standing. He was sitting. And God woke him up and and he, he forgave him. Yes, yes, yes. That's why Jesus died, so that all those failures could be forgiven. And sometimes when we preach the gospel, all we say is, oh, how happy, happy, happy it is to be forgiven. And we stop and we think that somehow this blessedness that comes from not walking, not standing, and not sitting, well, that's maybe... If you preach that, you're kind of preaching rules or you're preaching duty. That's that's not the way the psalmist thinks, and that's not the way Jesus or the apostles thought. It is blessed to have your sins forgiven, and once they are forgiven, oh, how sweet the fellowship when we can not walk with the wicked or stand with sinners or sit with scoffers. And let me show you why that's so crucial for Jesus' sake in the cross. Here's 1 Peter 2. He himself, Jesus, bore our sins. Yes, all those failures. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. Why? So that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. That's what's going on here. This is living to righteousness. That's what not walking, standing, sitting with all this evil is. So don't play off the sweetness of forgiveness against the power of of the death of Christ to give us a life of righteousness. Or one more, Titus 2.14, Christ gave himself, he died to redeem us from lawlessness and to purify for himself a people of his own possession, zealous for good works. So when you read, blessed is the man, let's clear this away. Blessed is the man who who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, who stands not in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. This purity, this righteousness, this holiness of life is a part of the Christian experience, not perfectly, 
gradually to be sure, but oh, let's believe it, let's preach it, let's convince ourselves of it so that we, after we have tasted the sweet blessedness of our transgression being forgiven, we might also taste the sweet blessedness of learning to walk and stand and sit in holiness, not unholiness.